Hi, I am Silos from PAN, the Physicians Association for Nutrition. I'm here to spill the beans. The coffee beans. Wait a second. Didn't I hear somewhere that coffee, coffee causes, causes cancer? cancer? Okay, many people love drinking coffee. It's actually one of the most popular beverages on the planet. So it's definitely worthwhile to take a look at the science behind it. Luckily for us, a review article was recently published in the prestigious New England Journal of Medicine, which can help us answer the big question, is coffee healthy or is it harmful? Well, coffee and its components influence different parts of the body. Let's start by looking at the brain. Caffeine has biochemical similarities to the drowsiness-inducing molecule adenosine. By binding to and blocking its receptors, caffeine can reduce fatigue, increase alertness and reduce reaction time. Well, great for escaping zombies! It can also improve vigilance during tasks of long duration that provide limited stimulation, such as working an assembly line, long distance driving and flying an aircraft. D dear pilots, please, before you stop sleeping altogether and just filling up on coffee, remember that caffeine cannot compensate for the decline in performance after long-term sleep deprivation. But it can reduce the risk of depression, suicide and Parkinson's disease. <laughs> On to organ number two, the heart. Love at first sight might give you heart palpitations. Coffee, on the other hand, does not raise blood pressure levels, even in people with hypertension. Interestingly though, a compound called cafestol, which is found in unfiltered coffee, such as the French press version, raises LDL cholesterol, which can lead to an estimated 11% higher risk of major cardiovascular events. So for persons with coronary artery disease or those with elevated LDL cholesterol levels, it might be advisable to stick to filtered coffee. In general though, coffee consumption is associated with a reduced risk of cardiovascular diseases with the lowest risk for three to five cups per day. Back to the big question, what about coffee and cancer? There is strong evidence that coffee consumption is not associated with an increased incidence of cancer or an increased rate of death from cancer. Oh yes. Coffee is actually associated with a reduced risk of skin, breast, prostate and endometrial cancer and hepatocellular carcinoma. Yeah! And if that's not enough for your liver to celebrate about, coffee can also lower the risks of fibrosis and cirrhosis, gallstones and gallbladder cancer. Haha, -ha, take that you coffee-hating critics. <laughs> This is all great news for you long-haul pilots and you zombie-chasing coffee addicts. However, there are two groups who should be a bit careful with their coffee consumption. Number one, anxious personalities. Caffeine can reduce sleep quality and at high doses may induce anxiety. So those already affected by anxiety or bipolar disorder should reduce caffeine intake or avoid intake later in the day. Number two, pregnant women. Some evidence suggests that higher caffeine intake is associated with lower birth weight and higher pregnancy loss. Even though this evidence is inconclusive, prudence suggests limiting coffee consumption during pregnancy to a maximum of two regular cups a day. Technically, the study mentions a third group, people who enjoy drinking about 75 to 100 cups of coffee in one go. With this amount of caffeine in your body, you would drop dead. Don't try this at home, folks. Jokes aside, at two to five cups a day, the benefits of drinking coffee vastly outweigh the risks, leading to fewer chronic diseases and reduced all-cause mortality. 
Due to genetic variations, some people might only be able to stomach a cup of coffee in the morning, whereas others might get away with drinking an espresso right before going to bed. In any case, coffee is not meant as a sleep replacement, but rather as a tasty treat that you enjoy while relaxing on your red velvet couch. Or of course, any other way you like to drink it. Hey, you there. Yeah, you, medical student. You feel the urge to improve on what you learned about nutritional medical school? Well, Pam is exactly what you're looking for. Connect with us, we're totally nuts about nutrition and we've got you covered. So use your loaf and get involved.